Hey, Yesland fans, welcome back to another episode of The Toys That Made Sense. On today's episode, we are going to be going over Mattel's um, Masters of the Universe Origins wave number 12. That wave that is very, very hard to uh, get right now. All right. Actually, let me rephrase that. I don't think it's hard to get. It's sporadic of where it's at. There's only a few of the uh, characters, action figures on Big Bad Toy Store. There's only a few like on Entertainment Earth. And then um, the secondary market, it's flooded, obviously like eBay and Facebook Marketplace and things like that. Now, this line, right, or I should say this wave is kind of a, a weird, unique wave for some reason. Now we know the majority of these figures always get released overseas first because the factories are overseas in the um, Orient countries and it's <clears throat> easier to get them shipped to their local toy stores or companies that sell them because they're, they're fairly close. They're somewhat on the same uh, continent, right? So anyways, for them to get to the US, it takes us it takes us a while but this particular wave and wave 13 which i don't have that wave yet either that's out there now these this wave is is kind of stirred a lot of emotion and a lot of um different feelings in the masters of the universe community that i have seen now they are popping up in the u.s big bad like i said big bad toy store has a few um mattel creations actually you know, they pop up periodically and you just got to watch that stuff daily to make sure that you're going to be able to get it. But I was very fortunate. I got a uh, Roboto right here. I got Roboto and I got, I believe it was Tongue Lashor off Big Bad Toy Store. And Hypno I got from, I want to say it was Mattel Creations. I can't remember. Don't quote me on all of it. But anyways, I got those three. I'm ready to dive in deep, check them out, see all their all their glory and all that good stuff. So you know what to do. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage and snack, and I'll see you on the other side. Right, yes, land fans, here we go. We've got them in studio, so let's get right into it. So, we have Hypno, the psychic hypnotist. We got Tongue Lashor, the creature with the venomous tongue. And we've got comic book Roboto, the hero heroic mechanical warrior. As we can tell, these are coming on the snake cards, obviously. They're cont Mattel's continuing to put them out with these cards, with these. Um, Last few waves, we've got great uh, sticker placement here on uh, the, the ruler of the sun, Sun Men, with Hypno, and as well with Tongue Lashor and Snake Men, and we don't get a sticker for uh, comic book Roboto. But moving into it, as you can tell, like I said, I'm missing the Skeletor, so I have no attachment to that Skeletor. I really don't need him for my collection. I think he looks cool, but... I just, I didn't need them for my collection. So at this point, as I've stated in previous videos, I'm only collecting the ones that I really, really remember or I have more of an attachment to. Obviously, Roboto wasn't like this when we got him when as a kid, uh, but I have more of an uh, attachment to him because I, I always loved the comic book uh, version of Roboto and the heart and all that. And then to continue with the uh, collection line of the Sun Men, uh, I wanted to make sure I kept uh, Hypno there uh, going along with the collection. So let's move right into it. So here we go. We've got Hypno. We got Masters of the Universe. I've already read off that. Re Modern Retro uh, Play. Mattel Insignia down on the bottom. So let's move it in. Let's take a look at him. Pretty cool looking guy. <laughs> Just looks like some kind of futuristic um, contender and some kind of <laughs> sports type thing is all I can say. Kind of gives me off this vibe of anybody that remembers American Gladiators. I don't know why I get that that vibe off of his uh, his chess piece and his cuffs and stuff like that, but that's what it kind of screams to me. But not a bad looking figure. Really good uh, face sculpt there. Very accented brightly with those orange and yellow colors. Uh, he's got those orange boots down there. Continuing in the Masters of the Universe line. No ruffles, though, like He-Man or anything like that. His cuffs, 
have the little uh, yellow triangle on there as well on his loincloth area. And it's an all solid one piece, as you can tell. And he's got this funky looking uh, chest piece going on in his yellow uh, 80s headband, if you will. <laughs> and then over here, we get this weird lollipop looking thing, right? But it's actually, it's his weapon. It's his uh, hypnotism type uh, weapon. So he can hypnotize his enemies and all that. So... And then in this, you get the uh, continued line with the same comic, The Assassin's Aim. And that's about it. But turning it around, as always, we get the, that beautiful carded artwork here. And it says, gifted with a mesmerizing voice, Hypno can both hypnotize people and see into the future. And then he's fighting some uh, creature over here. Almost kind of looks like a cross between Trapjaw and um, Webster. Kind of interesting. It kind of reminds me of Webster's head, but Trapjaw's half body, mechanical body, and all that good stuff. And then um, they're fighting in some kind of mystic ruin area. We've got some water coming down. But other than that, that's that's about it. Tell oh, that's right. He also comes with his bird. So you fit Falcon onto his arm, uh, remove helmet from uh, from hypnosis, and turn one into mesmer mesmerization. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Obviously, in this wave, we get tongue lash or snake armor, Skeletor, Roboto, and Hypno, and that's basically it. And all the legal mumble jumbo. So bring it in close. I love that artwork. Do we see any um, little Easter eggs in there? No, I'm not seeing anything. Maybe we might see this creature or other figure here come down the line, an enemy, possibly. Uh, quite frankly, I'm kind of still amused that they're continuing on with the Sunman stuff. So I figured they might be phasing this stuff out and coming to an end with it, but... Looks like they're um, continuing to put stuff out. And then moving into Comic Book Roboto. So Comic Book Roboto was not a an exclusive or, you know, a limited run. This one does not come in a um, brown outer shipping box like the others have in the past with those exclusives. And... He was just straight to the to the lines, so which was actually really, really neat to get him that way. But here we go. Interesting. He's matches basically his comic book uh, character that we see in the comic book. Get all his weapons there in the back. He comes with his little axe uh, weapon on his hand, accented off with the red uh, maroonish colored left hand. And then we can see that heart right there on the chest piece with all the gears. And then um, he's got that you know, orange jaw to accent the arms and the legs with the blue, blue, I don't know, what do you want to call it? eyes, you know, you know, screen <laughs> in his head. And then down there again, we get the Assassin's Aim comic book, uh, twist and unleash uh, his robot power, modern retro play, flipping it around back. Here we go. We got Roboto may have strength of steel, but in his, uh, cybernetically enhanced heart that makes him one of Eternia's uh, bravest, right? Yeah, bravest, sorry. And then clearly here, he's getting ready to knock out too bad. And then we got Skeletor coming in here with the staff. But then look at this. We've got that vehicle, that battling ram vehicle there in the background. So is that a, is that a little hint? Are we possibly getting that? And I cannot tell who is driving in that it's so blurry it's hard to tell who's in there so obviously i believe that's a little sneak peek into what's coming down the down the line and then we get the directions over here off to the side twist at his waist his gears turn and jaw moves automatically and three interchangeable weapons which you know that's that's pretty cool that's pretty cool he's just a different color and we get the heart this time around so i knew i wanted to have him in my in my collection which is weird. Some of you would probably say, then why didn't you have um, comic book uh, Trapjaw? I don't know. Just something about him I didn't like. I never cared for him. So I just didn't want to get him. But anyways, here we go. Got the rest of the line there. All the legal mumble jumble. So that's Roboto. Really cool looking. And again, the card and the artwork is pretty uh, pretty cool as usual. And then we get into Tongue Lashore. Now, Tongue Lashore, obviously this time around, because of all the mechanism in the in the abdomen and the headpiece area, he doesn't have the rolling mechanism to where the tongue comes out, obviously. And there's several videos out there that you can go look and, and find that if you're uh, wanting to do the comparison.
comparisons on it. But this uh, this version of him, it just you get the tongue alone. You could stick it in one way where it's sticking up or stick you know sticking out, sticking down. And then you get his weapon, which is like a butterfly bow weapon type uh, thing in there. So bringing him in close, very cool character. I knew I had to have him to complete my uh, snake snake men line. We got a neat looking face there. Get that green snake insignia on top of that orange, which pops. Love that purple with the dark purple on top, like a camo. And then we get those weird looking, you know, try dry finger type setup hands. And then we get those web feet, almost kind of like leech in a sense. And that's about it. Really cool character, glad to have them. And I love how the black gloves accent everything all together with the black loincloth. Moving them around back, looking at that artwork. We already know it, he's coming down the line. We are getting Cyclones. So with a paralyzing uh, toxin searing from his tongue, Tongue Lasher is the snake men's most feared soldier. And Cyclone's getting ready to take a good old swing at a Tongue Lasher there, but Tongue Lasher is getting that tongue in. He's gonna slap uh, Cyclone right there across the, the face. So basically here off to this left, it gives us the directions on how to do it. Uh, use the tongue, plug tongue into the mouth, fit, uh, fit staff and crossbow into his hands. Now, yes, he came later in the line. These are part of the, the, what I call the goofy era, but you know what? It's just something about him that was cool. And I always loved the snake men, like I've said in the past. So very, very, very cool artwork there as always. So guys, let me know what you think. Do, are, did you get wave 12? Are you picking up this wave? Are you passing on it? Are we getting to the point in this line where like, listen, there are so many original figures at the beginning of this line when Mattel was releasing these years ago. Why aren't we going back and doing that now? Finishing off before we move forward and give us all these different variations and then variations of the He-Man later in years and doing them in the 5.5. So let me know in the comments what you think. As always, I appreciate you tuning in today and I'll see you in Yesterland.